Welcome on everyone and thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are doing a class on the elements of who we are as, a, as mankind and what really makes us up. Uh, minerals are inorganic compounds um, and elements um, that are found only in nature and they are not part of, uh, you, you won't get them directly out of plants or animal organisms. They're, they're not animal plant or organisms. Uh, bulk or macro minerals, uh, those minerals are needed by the body in large amounts. Uh, for example, things like calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and phosphorus. While uh, trace or micro minerals, uh, these are needed in very minute quantities. Uh, for example, things like boron, chromium, uh, copper, geranium, iodine, and iron. So we'll be going through uh, the primary elements that we are made out of and uh, what types of um, deficiencies occur when you have, oh, what kinds of symptoms you have when you have deficiencies um, or excesses of those uh, minerals. So what's inside of us? If uh, we took down all of the elements that we're made out of and put them into um, a quantity, uh, we would have 90 pounds of oxygen. That would be most of us. And then you go from carbon, which is carbon is the builder. You think of uh, uh, sugars and things like that. Um, a lot of that is all carbons. Hydrogen down to calcium. And you can see we're getting a lot smaller quantities here. And so then you'll get down to things like chlorine, which is only four ounces in your entire body. Uh, this would be for an average 160 pound man or woman. And then we'll see as we get down farther, magnesium, fluorine, silicon. Now we're talking very, very small amounts until you get to iodine and manganese where there's only uh, uh, grams left. So now we're gonna go uh, through each different uh, element one by one and help explain uh, just what you'll see uh, when someone might be a type of element. Um, in a more natural uh, way of looking at the whole body, we actually acknowledge that certain people um, have, let's say, uh, not an excess, but their body primarily functions off one of these elements. And so um, not every element uh, has a uh, person type, uh, but only a few do. And we'll go through those in detail. So calcium. Calcium is what's called the knitter. It knits things together in the body. Uh, calcium is alkaline and it's positive a mineral. Uh, it is found in water, it's found in the ash of plants, and all soils. You can find uh, calcium just about everywhere in the, in the ground. And I will go through just a little more deep, uh, in more depth than what is on here as well. But um, adults need 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams of calcium daily. This is one and a half grams. Uh, could be supplied by a quart of raw milk. Uh, remember, you're not getting uh, the same nutrients out of uh, pasteurized milk. That's uh, typically here in America um, because when you cook everything, that it kills all the nutrients in there. So bone composition, um, all of our bones, you always think of, oh, drink more mi uh, milk to have healthy bones. Um, well, uh, that's where 51% of phosphate of lime, 32% uh, of gelane, 11% carbonate, and some calcium fluorine, sodium fluorine. Those are the two types of chlorine that you'll actually see in the body is uh, the calcium fluorine and the sodium fluorine. So actually not that much uh, calcium, uh, if you look at a whole percentage wise, is actually in the bones. Uh, and then you also have some magnesium and phosphorus there. So uh, kale fed chickens was a study that was done. Uh, they have strong, tough eggshells uh, because kale is an excellent source of calcium, um, just as our uh, milk, uh, bean, eggs, uh, egg yolks, and then the raw milk. So when the diet is inadequate, uh, calcium is one of the first elements to go. When you start uh, not eating properly, you're, you're not eating all the nutrients that your body needs. It actually needs to take from your body in order to perform all these very normal functions. So calcium is one of the first elements that it'll start using from, from deposits in your body to do those normal functions. Um, and open the door. 
And that's when uh, disease comes into the body to play, when you start taking from the body because you're, you're sort of uh, depleted from your normal nutrients. Uh, next would be carbon. Carbon's also called the builder. It's called the builder because so many different molecules and things um, are need carbon uh, to, to be solid with their with their molecular form. So, carbon itself is a negative, a tasteless, and odorless. It, it's an elusive element to observe and has an atomic weight of twelve. Uh, it is the uh, basic uh, element of cell birth and life. Anytime a cell is made, it's going to need carbon. Um, it is sometimes called the cradle of creation for that reason. Um, so, uh, carbon is a major constituent of all the sugars that, that I mentioned there. Therefore, sugars are referred to as carbohydrates because of that. Uh, the body uses a variety of sugars. Uh, fructose, which is fruit sugar. Lactose, or milk sugar. Glucose, that's that starch or grape sugar and saccharose, saccharose, which is the cane sugar, that, that very sweet cane sugar. And uh, the element makes up approximately half of the vegetable kingdom. So whether that's a zucchini or squash of other sorts, um, a lot of that uh, chemical makeup of that vegetable is carbon. So what, what might you see in um, deficiencies of when someone uh, doesn't have enough carbon? Um, that's when you'll see low vital energy and nerve force, causing an inability to digest and assimilate organic elements. Uh, depletion of brain and nerve force. Remember, we have a lot less nutrients to do these functions, so if, if it's lacking, these are the symptoms that you're going to start to see. Uh, vital impulse in the brain that controls uh, carbon metabolism becomes inflamed and diseased. Uh, acids, gases, toxins, and poisons begin to accumulate in the body, creating greater problems with metabolism of fats and sugars. If we don't have that, that main builder and we're trying to take care of all these sugars and things, that's when that, that disease is going to come into play. And let's see, the more carbon uh, consumer, uh, the greater demand for oxygen to generate warmth as well. Uh, chlorine, chlorine is the, cl the cleanser. Bill, let me also give you a periodic chart that we've got that as well. Okay. And Ahmed and Dr. Mom, I'll give those to you as well. Maybe two of those. Chlorine expels wastes, freshens, purifies, and disinfects. Uh, chlorine is considered the cleanser of all the elements there. A uh, 60 pound man, oh, sorry. <laughs> Let's do chlorine. Yeah. Uh, most green leaves contain chlorine, so that would be your really dark, greasy leaves. Uh, chlorophyll means chloros or green, and uh, phil means leaf. That's where the chlorophyll comes from. Uh, sodium chloride, or NaCl, is common table salt. This has an ionic bond, meaning that uh, the two elements exist as ions, so one has a positive charge, one has a negative charge. Uh, they're sharing their electrons, and that's how they're able to bond. This is not easily assimilated by the body, uh, because that compound is not actually found naturally occurring in nature. That's a man-made chemical of NaCl. Um, so, uh, use a lot. Use of a lot of table salt causes stomach imbalances. It increases uh, warmth in the stomach. Gets too hot, and then it increases uh, bowel uh, action, peristalsis, peristalsis, and uh, frees up internal muscular heat. Um, let's see. Chlorine is a caustic with an offensive odor and produces choking sensations uh, when, you, when you smell that. Um, it reacts easily with hydrogen, uh, forming that hydrochloric acid, a strong acid there in the stomach. 
uh, how what the effects of, of chlorine in the body are. Um, it, it's an anis, analgesic and, and anesthetic. Uh, hip, a, it's a hypnotic agent, makes the pupils dilate and become rigid, uh, produces loss of consciousness, and low blood pressure uh, causes body temperature to lower, makes breathing more shallow, paralyzes the brain, spinal cord, medulla, and heart, uh, creates general depression of respiration, depression of respiration, constricts blood vessels, and decreases muscle action. When you have way too much, you get a high dose of, of uh, chloroform, that's the, uh, the negative effect that it has on the body. Uh, chlorina is usually found where sodium is very high, usually in the form of sodium chloride. Uh, and then when chlorine reacts with alcohol, that's where the chloroform is formed. So high levels of chloroform are given off in a hot shower with chlorinated uh, water. So uh, most, uh, I guess probably all water treatment plants uh, put some level of chlorine um, in that water. And then when we take those nice relaxing hot showers, uh, we're actually getting that, that chloroform as it, as it heats up, it actually begins to uh, chemically uh, form that chloroform. And, and that's why we're feeling such a relaxed because it's actually like putting you in a lower state there as we had talked about with those other symptoms. So and let's see what we can find for where chlorine is found. Chlorine is found in all uh, greens and salad vegetables, goat's milk and whey. Uh, goat's milk helps in treating colitis and any colic conditions, from, uh, fermentation and putrefaction. And let's see if we can find some signs of a. These are the signs of a chlorine deficiency. Um, when someone is prone to a sluggish liver and glandular swellings, uh, when their appetite wanes and metabolism metabolism suffers. Uh, the spleen becomes inflamed due to a shortage of blood salts and the bowel is stasis. Uh, chronic skin ailments and painful urination can occur as well. Uh, next would be fluorine, which is the decay resistant element. Um, you might have heard of fluoride, a very uh, popular thing that um, is put in a toothpaste. It's also put into our water supply and things like that. Um, so, uh, fluorine was first, uh, fluor let's not get uh, fluoride and fluorine confused. Uh, fluorine is the natural element in its natural state, while fluorine or fluoride is actually a byproduct of aluminum. Uh, when aluminum is made, uh, things like fluoride and one other element, uh, it's a byproduct of that. It's actually waste. Um, so, uh, fluorine was first used in Egyptian embalming because it's the decay resistor uh, they would use that to embalm the mummies and then they would last for a lot longer. Uh, people are free to have diseases, but diseases are not free after you get them. Uh, if you're low in fluorine, disease can really come in quickly. So uh, fluorine is lacking wherever there is a virus in the body. And uh, fluorine is also known as the beauty element because if, if you have lots of fluorine, uh, you won't be decaying. Things will be light, lively and fresh in the body. And fluorine, fluorine also hardens and protects bones and teeth. So, um, to, uh, to really dive into uh, the difference between fluorine and fluoride a little bit more, so um, as we discussed, that uh, it's a byproduct of, of aluminum and, and other things as well. Well, when OxyChem, I think it was, uh, I'm not sure, but it was in the 19th century, in the 20th century, um, I think mid 1900s, somewhere in there, when um, Oxygen was really going, and they had um, they had all this excess of fluoride that was a, a, a waste product, and they really needed to get rid of it. Well, there was a uh, doctor of dentistry down in um, down in Texas, and uh, he came out with this study. Um, I think I don't know if he just got it mixed up between fluoride and fluorine, uh, but really uh, his his Thing got published and so then everyone took it as oh fluoride um, is this great thing that we can use to help you know protect our teeth well it's actually fluorine there's a big difference there when you have too much fluoride going into the body it actually 
it, it uses uh, all the other elements to help like metabolize it and, and put it to use. It really doesn't know what to do with it. Um, because it's, again, another non-occurring element or non-occurring non uh, molecule in, in nature. So if our body begins to get too much fluoride, it'll actually decay because now it's depleting our body of fluorine, which is that nice, de healthy decay resistor. Um, so yeah, it's, if I wanted to really put it home, um, I was working with a guy for a while and, and we'll go into more studies on, on things to, probably later, but um, they were doing tests in prisons on people's body chemistry looking to see what they're made up of, and then correlating those with what they were in prison for. And they found that, um, you know, certain people, maybe they uh, were in there for murder or things like that. They were de deficient in X uh, element. Well, when it came to uh, people of, that were pedophiles in prison for preying upon younger, very younger people, um, they found they were actually really deficient in fluorine. So, sounds a little, this one really hit at home. So I had this class at like a really perfect time when I learned this. Um, I was working with a gentleman that, uh, great guy, honest worker, and always showed up to work on time, but uh, you could tell he had some dental issues. He, after a few years, he ended up getting uh, dentures put in at only 40 years old um, because of how bad his teeth were. Well, um, outside of work, we, we became, uh, he was actually picked up by the feds um, for preying upon a 12-year-old a girl, uh, and that wasn't his first offense either. So. I had seen, you know, all these physical attributes of someone that, you know, had decaying teeth and things like that. But now that I've come into knowledge like this, I've, I've realized, wow, so that was a physical attribute showing a, a, uh, a bodily deficiency of fluorine. And then you have the mental aspect of it as well, where, okay, that guy's now in prison for, for uh, pedophilia. So um, obviously, I, I, I do believe that everyone has, has that still a mental choice and, and they can take on actions or not, even if they're deficient in a certain chemical or other things like that, there is still that, that mind and choice. But also keep in mind, deficiencies can also play a very big part in how the mind operates. Hydrogen would be the next one here. The moisturizer. Hydrogen is literally everything. It is really, uh, it, it loves to bond to many things because uh, if you look on your periodic table here, um, hydrogen is the very first one there. Um, it has one electron in its outer shell and it wants two really, really badly. It wants two shells to fill uh, that uh, valence electron shell. And so it will bond with many things. Um, Hydrogen means the water generator or water producer. Uh, hydrophilic people, so a person that is prone to, uh, you know, their body really does well with, with hydrogen atoms, uh, that person would be a hydrophilic person. Uh, they can gather moisture from the air. Their body will actually be able to retain uh, hydrogen atoms right through their skin. And they can even gain five pounds from going into a steam room. A steam room is one where they, uh, to make it hot in the room, uh, they'll, they'll burst out steam into it. It's different from a dry sauna. Um, so a person that would be a hydrophilic type, uh, they would be more beneficial to go into a dry sauna where they'll actually sweat uh, out the hydrogen atoms versus um, a steam room where their body will actually absorb it. Uh, how you might be able to um, I guess, uh, see a hydrophilic person uh, not to offend, but uh, they may be more heavy set. Um, it's not even that they have more fat or things like that. Their body actually just has that many more hydrogen uh, and moisturizing uh, atoms in their body. So 
The excess of water in the body causes pressure and enlargement of all surrounding uh, organs, tissues, resulting in dis-ease. When things are so, so full, it's hard for things to function and move in the body as well. Uh, Chlorine-rich foods help to reduce the water content of the body as well. Next is iodine. Iodine is primarily used there in the thyroid. It is the metabolizer. And if we wanted to find it here on our charts, see iodine. You want to see it? Oh, there it is. Number fifty-three, uh, second column from the right. There, down there. So it's also a disinfectant. The metabolizer. Well, iodine comes from the Greek word iodes, meaning violet colored. It has an arsitic taste, is non metallic, and bluish blackish to blue violet colored. Let's see. So uh, it has one of the highest vibratory rates of all the elements in the body. Um, as you might have seen in a, a previous class, um, kind of going to uh, explaining energy uh, as a whole. Uh, the earth resonates at 62 megahertz when they measured it there and the body uh, goes from a range of 62 megahertz um, through the whole body up to 68. Uh, the brain itself operates from 69 to 72 uh, megahertz but the thyroid where iodine is primarily you know, metabolized and, and, and stored and used um, uh, resonates at a higher 68. Uh, it is one of the first minerals to be adversely affected by high or low pH. So when you don't have uh, a solid pH, uh, that one is definitely going to be affected the most. Uh, cold hands and feet suggest low metabolism and poor circulation. So if you're having um, you know, cold feet, things like that, um, that might be due to low iodine. A uh, hypoglycemic person is usually deficient in iodine as well uh, because of that, that, that metabolism. Uh, you need that, that iodine to help metabolize everything. So people living on raw foods that are uh, taken directly from the refrigerator and putting, uh, are putting an extra demand on the thyroid for this gland uh, has to provide the heat for digestion and metabolism. So if we're taking things right out of the refrigerator, uh, cold milk, cheese, lettuce, anything, and we're ingesting that really cold, it's going to take our body a lot more iodine to be able to metabolize that. It's going to put a lot more stress on the thyroid as well. So back in 1915, 90% of American population was considered to be iodine deficient. This was over 100 years ago. And goiter was common, especially in the Midwest, along with sea coasts. Uh, seafood was plentiful. There was no problem. They didn't have goiter on the sea coast because of how much iodine they were absorbing just from their diet from the seafood. Well, here uh, we don't get as much here in the Midwest. So, uh, and again, that was 1915. Can you imagine what percent of Americans might be deficient now? Probably 99 percent. Iron. Iron is also known as the frisky horse. Iron must evolve through plants, which organize it into biochemical form uh, to be used in human biology. There's no way that in, in, the, in the rocks, uh, in the rock formation of iron, that our body can't metabolize that in any way. Um, so um, you might have had someone, um, might know of someone that takes iron tablets. Well, I would look into how that iron is obtained are they getting that from plants or are they getting that from actual iron? A chunk of rock iron, as, as they say it. Because um, if so, your body can't metabolize that. So it's probably just taking a long time to pass through your system. Inorganic iron must be partly excreted by the kidneys, which has a damaging effect on them. That's what inorganic we're talking about. Uh, there are rarely any complications of oversupply of food iron. Very, very rarely will we have any issues there. So, 
Um, iron is responsible for attracting oxygen in the body and carrying it to all systems, tissues, and organs. It bonds with the oxygen uh, chemical, actually iron itself, just it loves ox oxygen um, to help make it balance with its cell charge shell. Um, so that's how it, we, our body uses iron to transport all those oxygen nutrients uh, to the cells. So 25% of premenopausal American women are deficient in iron as well. Uh, iron deficiency hinders lactic acid elimination, which can result in fatigue. So if we're working out, um, lactic acid is one of those uh, chemicals that is, is a byproduct as we're, as we're working out. And um, if we're low in iron, which is that oxygen carrying um, element, it will result in fatigue because it can't move it away from the area fast enough. Magnesium, the relaxer. Alright, magnesium, the relaxer. This is one of the most important chemicals or elements that there are, really. Magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt combats auto intoxication in the intestines by drawing fluid from the contents of elimination. Uh, magnesium counteracts poisoning due to arsenic, aluminum, lead, phosphorus, uh, muriatic acid, antimony, chloride, and barium. Uh, poisons are neutralized when magnesium is liberally available. When your body has lots of magnesium, it's able to utilize this to get rid of all these other elements or all these other um, you know, negative toxins in the body. Uh, it is an alkaline metal. It has a positive electrical charge and produces alkaline reactions in the human body as well. So our pH scale runs from zero to 14 and uh, you know, foods, foods and everything else you eat um, can make your body more alkaline or acidic. We like to be about seven, which is halfway, maybe even just a little acidic. That way our body can have good hydrochloric acid and things. Uh, but we want to still be somewhere in the middle there. Uh, so with vitamin B6, magnesium helps to reduce and dissolve calcium phosphate and calcium oxalate in kidney stones. So if we're looking to have some kidney stones, you may you want to be taking some uh, B6 and magnesium to help dissolve all that as well. So next would be manganese. Manganese is a beloved element. Um, manganese itself, uh, it is the mother love element. Animals deficient in this. So this was a really interesting thing. Animals that are deficient, uh, they will actually show no concern for their, uh, for their offspring, uh, nor will they actually nurse them. Uh, they seem to have lost their natural uh, paternal and maternal instincts, and they may become cannibalistic. They don't actually eat their young because they've lost all that love. Now, as we saw at the very start, you know, manganese is truly only a really trace small amount out there, and the only way to get it is from your foods. So, uh, manufactured and processed foods contain infinitesimal, very, 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 very small amounts, um, and it's found. Uh, only minute amounts in natural food. So if you're on a very processed food diet, you won't be getting any manganese. It must be supplied by foods that have evolved biochemically from the dust of the earth. That's where it gets, uh, that's how that is even formed. So manganese acts upon the lining of the brain, cranium, heart, and sexual organs, and intestinal tract. Upon nerve conduction, the tubular walls of nerves, the ganglia, uh, so the nerve plexuses and the nerve trunk. So it works a lot on the nerves. And let's see, let's see. This would be cool thing I wanted to mention about this. Yeah. If you're really, so here are some of the signs of manganese deficiency. Someone who might be uh, vindictive, uh, hypersensitive, uh, hostile, indecisive, uh, preoccupied with the self, 
if they're easily riled or provoked, impatient, quarrelsome, you're finding someone that's really difficult to work with and you might not have a lot of love or even compassion for others. And if you blame them, they might just be deficient in maintenance. So they might have poor memory. Uh, if the females may cry easily and the males are prone to, per, uh, are prone to cursing. So if, uh, imagine if, if, uh, if a woman is, is deficient in manganese and then she has an offspring and, and that, that baby didn't get much manganese from her either, did it? So now you've got a cycle going on and, and down the line it's just less and less nutrients and, and love. So if, and if she did have, have much, then she probably passed it along to her offspring. All right, nitrogen. Nitrogen is the restrainer. Nitrogen is colorless, odorless, and it's a gaseous element. It's uh, non-metallic, combustible, and has a negative charge. Each year, lightning produces an estimated 100 million tons of fertilizer by converting inert nitrogen just in the air into nitric acid, uh, which can be used by soil. So you ever go outside after a really big thunderstorm or, or maybe it's, uh, it, it rained all night long, it was a big thunderstorm kept you up, but you go outside and you look at everything and, gee, that looks really green. Yeah, it looks well, everything looks more vibrant almost, you'd say, in uh, all the plants and the, the grass. Well, it's actually from the nitrogen in the air. It acts as a fertilizer, uh, giving life to all the plants. So, uh, legumes are particularly abundant storehouses of nitrogen. Uh, the process called green manuring refers to plowing green plants back into the soil to allow nitrogen to enrich the soil. So, um, you know, versus getting rid of all the plants, you just bring it, uh, bring it back into the soil, um, and then that can enrich the soil there. So uh, all protein foods contain a high percentage of organic nitrogen. Things, uh, even eggs, eggs are really high in nitrogen as well. Uh, free nitrogen is absorbed by the skin and some is utilized by the liver, uh, but most is elongated. Uh, retaining its free form. Even though nitrogen is colorless, a person who retains a lot of oxygen in their body will have a darker complexion, actually. Uh, oxygen is the giver of life. Oxygen comes from a Greek word meaning acidic producer. Uh, it is actually inappropriately named because uh, that is hydrogen function. <laughs> it penetrates uh, everything, no matter how solid or where it's located. High oxygen, Molecules can get through everything. They really can. They're that small, and also because they're always looking to attract uh, their molecules because of its uh, its valence electron shell, um, it, it can almost get through everything. So, uh, metabolism is a building process wherein food is broken down so that it can be assimilated for tissue building, repair, and fuel. And oxygen is needed to to do all of that. Uh, catabolism is a destructive process wherein toxic and, and worn out waste uh, material is prepared for excretion. And again, oxygen is needed for that. So a person in need of oxygen must have enough iodine for metabolism because if you're carrying all that and oxygen is, is, is moving on all those, um, all, the, all the nutrients to the body, you'll, you'll need that iodine as well. And what else would help move the oxygen? Iron. Iron picks up the iron uh, picks up oxygen just from the atmosphere. Phosphorus. This is one of my favorite ones. It's the light bearer. And let's see where we have it on our table. I want to say it's closer to the right side. Yep, right there in column number 15. Second one down. Phosphorus, as we mentioned earlier, you, you'll see it on your uh, chart that it's for bone, that's, I think that's 51% is uh, from uh, compiled with bone. So. Um, phos phosphorescent qualities are inherent 
in many life forms, including glow worms that live in the caves, uh, fireflies, and microscopic or organisms. Uh, phosphorescent fish generate great electricity. Uh, this, this fluorescent quality of phosphorus is vital to many life forms. So can we think of any, any sea creatures that might be high in phosphorus and are needed to make electricity? Yes, the electric eel, exactly, yep. So that is a phosphorphoric animal, would be an eel. Uh, phosphorus burns with a white flame, it burns out quickly. Combustion takes up place in the air and at average temperatures. So, uh, phosphorus is found in the nucleus of the cell. Think of phosphorus as like really high intensity and, and it's needed for a lot of output. Like, uh, if you really want something to be explosive and, and quick, You'll need phosphorus to make it happen. So, phosphorus is found in the nucleus and in body fluids and in solid tissues, potassium phosphate. Uh, the brain cells harbor a number of phosphorus cell salts, uh, but have a concentration of caliphos cell salts. So, that would be um, all the cell salts. Uh, if you, um, yeah, we'll, we'll go into phosphates in a later class, actually, uh, cell salts. Uh, the egg yolk contains vitaline, which is the creative principle. So if um, you're lacking some creativity, you might go eat, go, uh, eat some egg yolks. Uh, <laughs> vitaline is a nuclei protein containing a lot of phosphorus. So we need some phosphorus for low, the raw eggs. Nitrogen, let's see. Potassium is the great alkalizer. It is an excellent source of neutrali neutralizing agent. It's a preservative and a cooling antiseptic. So it helps your body get rid of septic uh, waste. Uh, due to its highly explosive properties, it is a valuable uh, element uh, in the manufacture of gunpowder. Uh, just as phosphorus is as well. Uh, when potassium is lacking, sodium and chlorine, chlorine are also easily exhausted and precipitated. So as we were talking about earlier with things like carbon, when your body is low on an element, it has to grab from other things. It still needs to make these bodily processes. So sometimes it'll, it'll kind of fake it till it makes it. So when potassium is lacking, um, it has to make, it has to use sodium and chlorine uh, just to get back one potassium. Uh, potassium types make, an ex make excellent athletes due to their speed, balance, stamina, and love of motion. So this is another, another one of those element types of, of people. Uh, if, they're, if their body does really well with pota potassium, um, yeah, that might, might be a good athlete. So uh, the myogenic type studies, uh, like in the arena of life itself, uh, you won't find a, a phosphorus, uh, sorry, a potassium person uh, really deep in a book. They like to be out there exploring the world. Um, they're drawn to things like athletics, mar martial arts, skating, hockey, bodybuilding, fire industries. They really like uh, explosives, <laughs> ballistics, uh, and things of that nature as well. The silicon. Silicon is the magnetic element. So if we look here on our table, let's see where silicon is. I think it's on the sink in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay, number 14. Second one down. So silicon makes up, oh, I want to say about 25% of the Earth's crust. Um, silicon, and actually, that is today why I brought my Fiji water. Uh, Fiji is, uh, like see, Fiji water is one of the only waters in the world that uh, naturally has silicon in it. Um, I am also, uh, after uh, finally figuring out, I'm a silicon type myself. Uh, a silicon person may be uh, blonde hair and blue eyed usually, um, a little bit thinner I believe, and uh, <laughs> So I'll get into some traits of, of us, but uh, they're pretty, pretty unique to myself. So I, yeah, I'm definitely a silicon type. Um, silicon is found in nearly all the Earth's minerals. 
uh, it affects the vibration of such precious stones as jasper, onyx, opal, and amethyst as well. Uh, if the hair, skin, and or nails are in bad shape, uh, then so are the nerves. And united with sulfur, silica, uh, both those together, they work efficiently to take care of the hair, skin, and nails. So if we're having uh, you know, issues um, in those areas, you definitely would want to be getting more silicon. Uh, you may even want to buy a goat uh, that has a shiny, nice fur coat uh, and glossy coat. Uh, for this shows that the goat has an adequate supply of silicon and other nutrients um, and therefore can give good milk. So we keep talking and bringing up that raw goat's milk. Well, I'm probably going to get the goat myself here soon. I uh, was just hearing all, about this. So, uh, the animal kingdom parts, uh, kingdom counterparts, are the gazelle. So these are all uh, silicon type animals. Uh, these would be the gazelle, the camels, the adax, uh, the mountain goat, the elk, uh, the antelope, and the mountain deer. All of these animals are known for their grace, speed, and fleet footedness. Oats are one of the best sources of silicon. And we don't want to be doing those instant oats because there's not much nutrients left in those. We're looking for that steel cut oats. Um, that's where you'll find uh, your great sources of silicon and also your alkaline phosphates, starch, gluten, dietase, and fiber. Oats contain uh, avenine, an agent in which has a powerful influence on the sexual system. Uh, it also helps relieve nervous tension when a person is trying to break a bad uh, smoking habit or drug habit as well. So we'll definitely want to use that silicone. And next is sodium or the youth element. People that are, uh, have lots of uh, sodium in their body, they might be a, a young spry person that's, that's still and maybe just hit over the hill, but they don't, they don't feel like it that hard, you know? Uh, sodium on the table. Let's see where sodium is at. Yeah, You guys see sodium? 11. 11, okay. Oh, wrong one. 11, what are you showing me on yours? All right, let's see number three. <laughs> Perfect, good. Um, so it is a silvery, white, brilliant, lustrous, alkaline, and has a positive charge. Um, it's, its symbol is uh, Na. Um, so it has a powerful affinity for oxygen and oxidizes rapidly in the air. Together, sodium and oxygen produce a yellow flame. A lack of sodium results in hardening, stiffness, rheumatization, gout, gallstones, bladder ailments. Sounds like a lot of the things that might occur as you begin to age. If you're not up on your elements um, and sodium and things like that, and we always hear Oh, sodium is bad for you. You don't, don't have too much sodium. Well, you don't want the too much of the wrong kind of sodium. You want the healthy things that you'll get from potato kind of sodium. Um, goat whey is an excellent source of sodium. Uh, again, with the goats, uh, they are they are sodium type animals themselves. Actually, uh, they are browsers and playful. Think of a goat. They're always just running and jumping and around. They're always very happy. So. And they're also more intelligent than cows. Uh, wherever there is a joint, it's supposed to say joint, uh, where there's a joint problem, there's also a stomach problem. Sodium uh, keeps calcium in the body. Therefore, if the sodium stores are adequate, uh, calcium deposits form, calcium deposits, uh, um, let me see what that was. So in our bones and in other places, our, our body is always looking to store uh, nutrients um, so that if we need it later, we have it there. So sodium keeps calcium uh, as a solution in the body. Therefore, if sodium, sodium stores are inadequate, calcium deposits form in the body. Um, and then whenever the body 
uh, develops catarrh and alkaline sodium diet is indicated. That means uh, it's two alkaline sodiums. Uh, solvent action helps uh, remove the catarrh pus that's in the body there. Uh, sulfur. Uh, it's the last one here. Uh, this is the heating element. Uh, it is also known as a brimstone. Uh, volcanoes contain a lot of sulfur. A lot of sulfur. Uh, it is a non-metallic, smoky, combustible, acidic, volatile, and restless element. Uh, sulfur enhances beauty. Like iron and fluorine, uh, sulfur is a beauty ambassador and youth promoter. Uh, it does not conduct electricity and is not soluble in water there. Let me see about a sulfuric person. So effects on the body. Uh, with long-term administration, anemia destroyed, anemia, which is uh, destroyed red blood uh, corpuscles, and emas emaciation can result. Also, uh, there may be an iron or ferric taste in the mouth. Uh, and the breath may be hot and putrid, uh, and dry hair, shivering, and unsteady pupils if someone um, can just, or has too much sulfur in their body. Uh, burning face that becomes rough like sandpaper as well. So what is it, uh, how does it work in the body? Uh, well, sulfur, it, uh, cleanse, it cleanses and heats the blood. Think of, um, I always think, when I think of sulfur, I think of like a hot geyser or something like that in the water uh, or in the ground, like at, at Yellowstone. Um, it's, that, it's that heating element again. So that's what's actually used to heat the blood in the body. It also increases blood tension and um, it drives impurities to the surface of the skin. So uh, we like to think that the body heals actually from the top down, from the inside out, and in reverse order So um, of, of how we got it. So if we're working on something that's really deep inside of us, maybe there's some toxins or or bad tumor or cancer cells somewhere in our body, well, it's, um, the, the body's going to use sulfur to actually draw that out of the body and make it its way to the skin. That's, that's how we use the sulfur there. Um, for the muscular and skeletal system, uh, sulfur gives strength and durability to bones and muscles. And for the skin, keratin contains sulfur, and keratin is uh, the agent found in all horny tissues such as nails, hair, feathers, and the epidermis of the skin, or the cornea of the eye. Uh, and where is sulfur found? Uh, sulfur vegetables are known as winter vegetables. It's not a little ironic. In the very cold of winter, that's where you're gonna have your heating sulfuric uh, food. Well, if you think I believe that God created this earth, so if he wanted to help keep us warm in winter, well, that's, he did just the right thing by, by making uh, foods that are, that harvest in winter, they're the sulfuric, they help heat our body, they heat our blood. So, um, yeah, they can withstand the cold, in bitter weather and in turn then they warm the body. So these vegetables in the raw state can cause excessive gas. Uh, if steamed over low heat, they can cause uh, less, they cause less flatulence. Uh, so eating uh, sulfurized foods, especially dried fruits, fruits uh, can eventually cause auto intoxication. Organic sulfur is easily assimilated into the body. Uh, the drug sulfur is transformed by alkaline secretions into sulfur certain sulfides, which are expelled through the lungs, kidneys, and skin. So, a signs, these are some signs of someone that might have too much uh, sulfur in their body or in excess. Uh, they may be prone to having a flushed face uh, from blood rising to the surface of the skin or a rose tint. Uh, more sulfur is present in red-haired persons than in many blondes. So you might find that uh, my brother, <laughs> Red-haired, well, he might be a sulfuric cone because he has red hair. So, 
Um, they have uh, soulful eyes with a blue-gray or light hazel hue to their iris and are tall and beautifully proportionate, graceful in movement, and have firmness of the joints. All right. I do want to go back and recap just a little bit. Let me see if I got my notes here. So as far as um, diseases and things like that, as they come into the body, uh, we may be able to just use this very small chart that I have to uh, understand what elements what we might be lacking um, as they correlate to what issues we're having in our body. So um, here are the minerals uh, for organs and the systems of the body. Um, we'll go through just a few of these. So uh, the brain, so we think of what might be needed for the brain. We talked about phosphorus and uh, sulfur. Those are primarily Primarily phosphorus, but there's other ones as well there. So, uh, magnesium and potassium. If we're having stomach issues, we may be needing to balance out our sodium levels with our potassium, chlorine, iodine, and calcium levels. We want to make sure that, that hydro hydrochloric acid that's in there, as well as the other things, um, is, is equally balanced. And because potassium is that great alkalizer, that's why sometimes you might even take uh, a spoonful of uh, baking soda and put that in your water and just take a little shot of that to help uh, some of that, that heartburn or things like that because potassium is used to alkalize the hydrochloric acid of your stomach. Uh, lungs, manganese, phosphorus, and silica. Uh, those are important there. For the kidneys, that would be potassium. Um, which one's that? We got the... Uh, the grape, great alkalizer. Uh, chlorine, fluorine and manganese there. Um, next for the eye is sulfur and fluorine are needed. Uh, for the throat, um, sodium, phosphorus, chlorine, and of course, magnesium iodine. That's where the thyroid is, and so we need a good stable amount of iodine in there as well. Uh, the in the brain, we have the pituitary, the hypothalamus, and the pineal gland. Um, phosphorus, of course, another one of those. Iodine, manganese, and bromium. Uh, if we're having liver issues, the two best elements that we can have for that would be sulfur and iron and uh, potassium. Then adrenals. Our adrenals, get they, they work so hard for us, and we don't think we get them. We don't, get, we don't appreciate our adrenals enough, you know? Uh, producing all of our energy for us. Uh, B5 plant acid and calcium pan, uh, and vitamin C. Uh, those are the two best things that we need for that. And any other big ones? Let me see. Uh, for men, our reproductive systems need a lot of zinc and silica and magnesium. Uh, and then in general, just the, both the testes and ovaries need a lot of zinc and uh, manganese as well. Uh, pancreas, that's uh, putting all the uh, insulin into our body. Uh, that needs a lot of chromium and zinc as well. All right. And let's just finish off with looking back at again, what are we made out of? We, we truly are what we eat, and when we have a good, healthy amount of everything, our body can function normally. So we do still need to be breathing. That's how we get our oxygen mainly. Uh, we still have to be eating those good, carby vegetables um, and everything else. So um, thank you so much for attending. Uh, we will be uh, going again here in about one or two weeks with our next class. Uh, teaching on both homeopathy, we'll have one class on that, as well as uh, a further look into um, uh, the, the biology of how we're made out of and, and more so how our body uses all these elements in each cell. Thank you so much. Great.